Do you guys remember how in my last video I said they haven't released the roadmap for Halo Infinite Season 2, but watch them do it now that I've made a video complaining about that? They literally released the roadmap, or a semblance of a roadmap, the day I uploaded that video. Fantastic, just amazing timing on my part. It's funny because the same thing happened with Battlefield 2042. I said, where's the gameplay? And then two days later, they were like, here's a beta. I, I need to keep my mouth shut, or I'm basically speaking these things into existence, in which case, I'm gonna keep doing it. So I have been making a big stink about Halo Infinite since it came out. I think that the series has a standard that Infinite is falling well below. Now, I make this clear every video so people don't think that I'm a giant hater. I love the game mechanically. I think just playing the game, running, aiming, sprinting, shooting, it's fun. I could do it for hours. One of the reasons I can do it for hours is because I have a really nice gaming chair sent to me by Ewin International, and if you want to get a gaming chair and support the channel while doing so, please head to the link in the description and use code OneBoom20 to uh, save 20% on a gaming chair or desk. Despite my chair being incredibly comfortable, however, I can just play Halo Infinite because of its mechanics. Again, running, aiming, jumping, shooting, using the grappling hook, using power-ups, it's fun. I don't love the power weapons, I didn't love the campaign's plot, and I don't like multiplayer's lack of content, and of course, missing co-op, missing firefight, and missing forge is a giant dagger in the game that I'm just not going to ignore or shut up about anytime soon, especially when we get news like this. Season two will not bring co-op campaign until later, and I'd have to guess about a month later. So we have to wait like two more months until season two, and then probably another month after that for co-op campaign, maybe? They're sort of aiming for that, but it won't be there at launch, so I'm guessing again about a month or a couple weeks later. And then Forge is maybe gonna come in season three. So, you know, probably around autumn, you know, probably early winter we'll have Forge. It's just taking far too long. This game should have launched this next winter, not last winter. Especially since we're getting two new maps, one arena, one BTB, and that's all for now. That's all we know about for now. There might be more throughout season two. There might be more at season two's launch. Let's hope, let's cross our fingers. Let's hope for the best. I do want to point out though, that on the Call of Duty side of things, years ago, Modern Warfare 2019 launched, and then two weeks later, we got Shoot House and Farmland, a ground war map and a traditional 6v6 map which was awesome. It was a way for them to apologize about some of the launch issues while also, you know, giving us a new game. And then two weeks later, here's more content for free. And then we got season one and it was big. It had multiple maps, new weapons, new modes, new operators. It was a big deal to get an event like a season in a Call of Duty game. And in my opinion, even throughout Black Ops Cold War and now Vanguard, a season in Call of Duty means miles more than a season in Halo Infinite. A season in Warzone means more. A season in Apex or Fortnite means more than anything that Infinite's doing so far. And while Infinite hasn't been out for years and it hasn't, I guess, picked up Steam yet, it's been out for like four months, guys. Like, are we gonna wait for season two to come out, see how that is, and then wait for season three, and then maybe by the end of this year, then I'm then I'm allowed to judge the game? I don't know. But when it looks like we're only getting some new modes, a bunch of new cosmetics, and two maps, one arena, one BTB, that is disappointing. Uh, I don't really love Halo Infinite's BTB, just saying, you know, it's probably because I don't love the power weapons, the map designs, or the vehicle play, so BTB and Halo Infinite's not my jam, so really it's only one new map in the mode that I actually am going to be playing the most of, so I think I'm allowed a little disappointment here. Uh, also, in their blog post, they talked about maintaining a healthy life-work balance, and I just wanted to call that out real fast. I fully agree that nobody should be burnt out, depressed, overworked, crunched, unpaid overtime. All that's bad, you know? I had a situation growing up where my family had to work really, really hard just to sit down and have a meal. And I, I get what overworking does to people. I, I grew up with it firsthand. And as a YouTuber, somebody who just sits here and rants into a mic, I've suffered burnout. I've suffered some work-related problems because I don't know how to balance making my own schedule. So look, I, I get it. I'm not being apathetic. I'm not trying to be a dick. Just don't put this on your community. Talk to Microsoft. Talk to your, your company heads. Don't release 
a statement about your next bit of content that you're creating for what are essentially customers and leading with, hey, we're trying to maintain, you know, good mental health and a healthy work-life balance. It's like, yeah, don't, don't bring that up. Don't do that. That's like having a bad day as a waiter and walking up to a table and being like, hey, I'm having a terrible day, so give me a break. Look, I'm sorry that video game development is hard, but I am the consumer, the customer in this scenario. I'm gonna think as a customer. I have money and time invested into this, not as an investor, but as a fan. I've been playing this franchise since I was a kid, and I really don't go to a restaurant to worry about the waiter's mental health. I treat them with human decency, they do their job, I have a good time. Don't start your season two blog post with, hey, we're trying to balance our life and work. I'm sorry, that's your employer's problem, not mine. I'm, again, I'm the customer. I'm the one, you're trying to get me to sit and play the game, you're trying to get people to go buy the game, you're trying to get people to sign up for Game Pass, own an Xbox, upgrade their PCs. You're trying to get people to incorporate themselves in your ecosystem. That's your job. I don't walk into a business and take on the mental and work-related woes of the entire company because I walked in the door. Let's look at this in a YouTube context real fast. I'm providing you guys content, but you guys aren't paying me to do so, really. You, you guys hang out, you might donate, but I'm not your employee. You're not my employer. But if because of my work-life balance or my mental health or my ability to pace myself, I'm not able to upload. I'm not able to live stream, or I start putting less and less work into my videos, I don't get to blame you for unsubscribing or leaving or just, you know, prioritizing me less in your life as a place for entertainment, news, and rants. You know what I mean? You don't come to my channel and take on the brunt of my life woes. I'm sorry. So. 343, mad respect to you guys. You guys know how to make a mechanically sound Halo game, but clearly, whoever is keeping your lights on did not anticipate people actually wanting the game to have anything in it. I wanted to hear about four new maps. I wanted to hear about new weapons and weapon pickups, new power weapons, returning power weapons. I wanted to hear about stuff that matters like that. Because you can do balance fixes and fix netcode issues, all day long. You could make it so that vehicle play isn't atrocious. I don't care. I need something new to play with. One new map, new cosmetics, and a new mode or two is not going to get me hyped to sit and play your game. Especially when we look at it in context of the rest of the series. Every other Halo game except Halo Infinite lived up to its premium standard, maybe Halo 5 being the least good example of that, but it still launched with a more complete feature set than Halo Infinite. The campaign of this game feels like a part one of five. The multiplayer feels woefully unfinished. The side modes aren't even here. And I'm wondering why? Why did this game come out? Why did it have to be released? Microsoft, Halo is your flagship series. And if I have to wait for the winter for me to be able to look at the game and see it as complete, that's depressing. You don't get to do a little, oh, here's two maps and some modes and some cosmetics type of season. No, you are in recovery mode. Act like it. When I saw the roadmap had been revealed, I got excited. I wasn't like, oh, damn it, they released the roadmap. Now I have to be positive. I was excited to see what was a part of it. I wanted you to come out swinging, and it looks like Halo Infinite's going to go out with a whimper. And that's depressing. Your competition in the AAA space is better. Your competition in the free-to-play market is better. Like, yeah, you made the guns feel good, and the mechanics feel solid, and the grappling hook's fun, but that is not going to carry your game through multiple seasons of lackluster content and delayed mainline features. I also need to say something that I believe a lot of people need to hear. Cosmetics are not content. They just aren't. Especially for somebody like me, who doesn't buy armor sets just to collect them. I understand that I can only run one at a time, so I'm gonna make the armor set that I like the most and maybe tweak it accordingly depending on attachments and things they add down the line. But the fact that like a big part of their blog post is like, look, we have new armor sets coming. It's like, how tone deaf are you? I don't care how badass my Spartan looks if I'm playing on the same maps using the same power weapons. And those are the meaningful things you need to be adding. 
To summarize, Halo Infinite currently only appeals to people that are centered around improvement and competitive play. The types of people that will play CSGO for 10 plus years. They don't care about variety of experience, they don't care about interesting new additions to the game as much as they just want to get better. And there's nothing wrong with this, I'm not making fun of them, but unfortunately, that's not what Halo has been to me for years. Halo was a social catalyst of things to do with people. From firefight to co-op campaign to forge to well-designed, robust custom game options. Interesting maps with lots of variety between them. Like the MCC shines a spotlight on what Halo used to be. So in summary here, Halo Infinite only caters to that competitive improvement crowd that doesn't mind playing the same maps over and over again because they're able to refine their strategies and they'll just enjoy the game's meta for what it is. And you know, this is kind of reflected in the weapon pickups in Halo Infinite, how many of them require more precision, they're more of a combo tool, they require some more finesse, they're not the sort of power weapons like brute shots, fuel rod cannons, flamethrowers, they weren't designed to be serotonin release tools, they're designed for more accurate and proficient players to take advantage of. There are exceptions to that, but I think it sort of goes further to prove my point, at least a little bit. So I'm sorry this video is sort of joyless, and I don't know if I've already used this gameplay before, but I just had to make this video quickly because they revealed Season 2 literally the day I uploaded my last Halo video, and then I took a day break after my last Vanguard video. Oh my god, things are about to get so much more negative. More rants coming your way. Hit subscribe, hit the bell icon. If you sat through 11 minutes of my tangent here, Jesus, what's wrong with you?